Well, hello everyone and welcome to the New Jersey Association for College Admission Counseling College Fair. We are so excited to have you participating in this event tonight and have some really fantastic schools here with us today. Each of them will have about six minutes to share more about their institution, but they'll be around for the entire session to answer questions. My name is Karis and I'll be serving as your facilitator tonight. And so before we get started, I have just a few housekeeping items. The first one you've probably already noticed, your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can, however, use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of the many different sessions happening, so be sure that you've checked out that schedule on the website. And then finally, the presentation is going to be recorded tonight and will be available to you at strivescan.com slash New Jersey. That's all the announcements I have for y'all, and so I will go ahead and turn it over to our first institution and presenter, which is Johnson and Wales University. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sharon Gramco. I'm one of the admissions reps at Johnson and Wales University. Thanks for joining us tonight for the, uh, the evening session. I'm excited to talk to you guys and get to know you a little bit better. I am gonna share my screen and show you a little fun PowerPoint. Big visual person, so. All right, so here we go. There we go. Okay, so Johnson and Wales University, a little history on us. We were founded in 1914, believe it or not, as a small business school. A lot of people know us for a lot of our culinary programs, but ironic that we were founded in the business industry. We do have two locations. Uh, we have our Providence, Rhode Island campus, and then we also have our uh, Charlotte, North Carolina campus. We do have about 5,900 students at our Providence, Rhode Island campus. That's gonna be our flagship main campus. And we have about 1,500 students on the Charlotte, North Carolina campus. Um, so in total, including our online students too, we have about 8,000 students. Uh, as I mentioned before, our Providence, Rhode Island campus is our main campus. We are located in the smallest state in the United States, <laughs> uh, but we do give big breaks, as it says. So uh, what we love about the Providence area is it's a major city. There's a lot to do, a lot of different businesses, a lot of restaurants. Um, you can walk pretty much anywhere. We do have public transportation right next to the campus, uh, so you can certainly get around easily. We are about one hour from the Boston area and then about two areas, uh, two hours from the New York City area. And then we just have a little visual here that you could see some of the, the breakdowns of our ethnicity on the um, Providence campus. We are very diverse. And then as far as our Charlotte campus, the Queen City, as you could see here, um, we are located right in the heart of the city. So our campus is actually only a block and a half wide. We're pretty much a campus in the Charlotte area that goes up versus out. Uh, so you can certainly walk pretty much anywhere, uh, you know, businesses, restaurants, so on and so forth. Fun fact about Charlotte is it is the second largest banking uh, city in the country right now. So those interested in finance, accounting, this is a great place to be. And then you can kind of see the breakdown of our diversity on our Charlotte campus there too. One of the pillars uh, that we uh, are known for and, and really stand by at Johnson & Wales is learning from the best. So all of the faculty in all of our academic programs have actually had experience in the fields they're teaching in. Um, across the board, our faculty members have an average of about 15 years experience in their actual field. And that's one of the things that the university looks for when they're hiring candidates is people that have actually done the job that they're teaching. So that's pretty cool. We're really excited that we can offer that to students. Another pillar is learn by doing. Um, so what that means is experiential learning, practicing what we're preaching in the classroom. How do we do that? Uh, internships. At Johnson & Wales, every single major requires an internship. Uh, and one of the unique things that we have is that we do not have classes on Fridays. And one of the reasons that we have that is so that our students can go ahead and have some type of internship without missing any classes or getting pushed behind. Currently, we have about 1,500 internship sites in 46 states and 33 countries. Some of those companies are with Marriott, Carlos Bake Shop, for those of you in the New Jersey, New York City area, the New York Giants, Tropicana Casino, Wegmans Food, Live Nation, and then uh, also Weston, just to name a few. We also have a lot of different study abroad programs. We currently have 80 programs in 40 countries. If there is a country that's not on our list, you can work with the department and they will try and make that happen for you. 
Another area that we have that uh, practices the um, learn by doing is something called learning labs. And I know this slide says Charlotte, but we have learning labs in both Providence and, and Charlotte campuses. And what these basically are are career focused classrooms. So for example, for our criminal, criminal justice students, we have almost like a CSI scene in which uh, a crime scene in which the students can come in and, and navigate it, look through the evidence, learn how they can really investigate. Really, really cool. Check it out online. And then uh, we also have a learning lab for our business students, and it's set up like a finance center with live electronic ticker tape. They have uh, real-time stock info. It's actually soundproof, so students will really get to know what it's like to really be in a business meeting. And then we also have another learning lab, and these are just to name a few, um, for our food and beverage industry management students, and that's called the Bigelow T classroom, and students are going to learn all about food pairings and creating professional food profiles. Uh, students start with water, tea, and coffee, and then they learn what foods go best with those, and then they move on to beer, wine, and spirits, and then they learn what foods work best with those. So really, really neat opportunities. Our uh, faculty, student to faculty ratio is 18 to one and average class size is about 18 students. So we definitely have personal attention and students easily make connections with their faculty members. Another unique pillar at uh, Johnson and Wales is you do jump right into your major. Um, so students are gonna be taking courses in their major right away freshman year. A uh, couple of reasons for doing that is that you get started right away. You hit the ground running if you know what you wanna do. And then maybe you don't want, know what you want to do and you decide you want to go ahead and switch your major. That gives you plenty of time to be able to go ahead and do so. We have over different 80, 80 academic programs to choose from. Some of our more popular majors are anything in the culinary industry, hospitality management, criminal justice, business, and biology. Oops, get the slide there, sorry. Um, so some of our newer programs that we have, you can kind of go down the list, but I'll, I'll go real quick, is adventure sport and sustainable tourism management, beverage sales and marketing management, business exploration, cannabis entrepreneurship, which is actually becoming very popular, computer engineering, data analytics, economics, event management, exercise science, sport management, sustainable food systems, and university explorations. And two that I really just want to touch upon real quick are business explorations and university explorations. Because basically what those are are undeclared programs. So if you know you want to go into the business industry, but you're not necessarily sure what aspect, marketing, management, accounting, business exploration would be great for you. And with university explorations, that's almost like an interest area. So if you're not sure what you want to do, but you think you might know what you want to do, university explorations would be a really good option because you're going to be taking courses, uh, two to three general education courses, and then about two courses in the area that you think you're interested in. We have over 150 clubs and organizations to choose from, everything from student government, DECA, intramurals, you can see. If there is something that's not on our list, if you grab five friends and a faculty member to be your advisor, you could start it right up. National student organizations, if you are currently involved in any of these areas, um, Skills USA, FCCLA, DECA, we do actually give out scholarships just by being a member and participating. So this is definitely something that you want to designate on your uh, application. And then uh, residence life, I'm going to wrap up. I'm running out of time. We have a division three athletics, a bunch you could choose from. If you are interested in applying, we do accept the JWU application, the common application your transcript, that's the only required op, um, aspects of the application. And then uh, test scores are optional, so you would not need to submit those. And scholarships, we have about 95% of our students now, that number, believe it or not, just went up, um, are receiving some type of scholarship, apply to the university, you're automatically gonna be considered for any type of scholarship, and it's good for all four years, as long as you're a full-time student. We do accept outside scholarships uh, from many different organizations. And then finally, financial aid, you'll file the FAFSA and you can do so by doing the code up here, 003404. And you will have a one-on-one -on -one financial planner. And if you'd like to come visit us, here's all the different ways you can do it. You could visit from home um, or you could visit in person and you visit those websites. So thank you very much. I really appreciate your time. All right, up next, we've got Kaiser University. Hey, Jacqueline, looks like you're still muted. Oh, 
All right, is that better? Perfect. Thank you. All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jacqueline. I'm an admissions counselor with Kaiser University. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with Kaiser University, we are the largest private non-for-profit school here in the state. Um, here you can see some beautiful photos of our flagship campus in West Palm Beach, uh, where we have our residential living. Uh, but as I mentioned, we do have campuses in every major city here in Florida. Um, so whether you're coming to relocate to live on our flagship campus or you have family here in South Florida or really anywhere in Florida that you plan to live, you'll have access to a great opportunity with Kaiser University. Um, so today I just wanna share with you guys a bit about Kaiser University, make sure you have a chance to get some insight into who we are. And at the end, I'll make sure that everyone has access to an application um, link and fee waiver. So we'll go ahead and waive that $55 fee for you for being here today, um, whether you're live or watching this pre-recorded. Uh, Kaiser University was founded back in 1977 by Dr. Kaiser and his mom, Evelyn. Um, it was really off the back of their own personal college experiences that they wanted to create Kaiser University. Uh, so what we are uh, is a career focused institution. We focus on small classes, about 15 students to one teacher, uh, and that really gives our students and faculty an opportunity to collaborate in meaningful ways that will prepare them for their future career. Um, at Kaiser University, we do offer over 100 degree programs, and we are the number one producer of nurses here in the state, uh, ranked number five in the nation um, as of late for production of nursing degrees. So certainly a great opportunity if that's a career you're thinking about going into. We also offer some unique opportunities in esports, cinematic arts, equine, um, so lots of opportunity with us. And as you can see, you can pursue associates, bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees. With so many campuses and so many opportunities, the best way to find out if we have your program and where it's located is to go ahead to kaiseruniversity.edu so that you can explore the different locations and different campuses. Uh, at our residential campus, our flagship residential campus in West Palm Beach, um, you can see we're very diverse and we do embrace that diversity. We always encourage students to step outside their comfort zones, view things from a different perspective, and that's all enhanced by the diversity that we celebrate on campus. <clears throat> All right, so just some key facts and highlights. I did mention Kaiser University is number one producer of nurses here in the state. We've also been ranked amongst the top safest residential campuses in Florida. Um, so for the parents joining me today, if you have some hesitation about your student going away, um, rest assured at Kaiser University, they're in a safe place. We are a gated community. Um, and so, you know, there's a guard gate when you come in, guard gate when you leave, and that just really adds that safety component. Uh, most of our faculty are full-time, about 85%. And I'm going to get into academics in a little bit. Um, there's a lot to go over on this screen, so I'm not going to go through all of it, but you can also see some of our athletic teams um, have, you know, placed in national championships. Uh, so there's a lot of exciting things happening both inside the classroom and outside the classroom. Um, and speaking of athletics, just to give you guys a quick glimpse, these are the men's and women's sports. All of our athletic teams um, have their coach contact information for you to reach out to at KUCHawks.com or on Instagram, you can type in Kaiser followed by any one of these sports. You'll have direct access to what's going on, not only with the team, but to be able to reach out to the coaches as well. We also offer some co-ed intramural opportunities from our fishing club to our esports team. We also have spirit squad and dance team and they do compete international, uh, nationally, I should say. Um, so whether you're an athlete or an athletic supporter, it's some, you know, a lot of fun, a lot of great things happening on campus. All right. Skip that video in the interest of time, but I do want to give you gamers out there a glimpse to see some of the games that we do get involved with. I know it's a super popular question. People get very excited about esports. Uh, we are always adding uh, games to our repertoire. So if there's something not there that you play, talk to coach about it. There's always some opportunity. And then, as I mentioned, we've got so many different programs. These are some of the highlights of the particular programs that we offer at our residential campus in West Palm. All right, so just a quick academic overview. I did mention that majority of our faculty are full-time and I mentioned those small class sizes. 
Um, like, you know, many of the, the schools we'll share with you here tonight, Kaiser University is also invested in making sure that you have experiential opportunities. So what this means is we're going to support you in research in your field. We're certainly going to provide opportunities um, for you to go out into the community and experience through, you know, field trips what you're learning. We are always bringing guest lectures here on campus, so we bring the professionals to you as well. Um, and there are study abroad opportunities which change each semester, so you can keep an eye out for those. Um, and then we do have work study and internship opportunities available on campus. All right. And uh, just to touch quickly on admissions to wrap everything up for undergraduate admissions, we are test optional. Um, so we're going to ask you for your high school transcripts, if you have any dual enrollment, AP, ACE, Cambridge, um, any college credits that you've pursued, we're going to ask for those as well. Your ACT and SAT scores are optional, but we do encourage you to submit them because they may benefit you. Um, and then for programs such as nursing, there are some additional requirements. But don't worry, because the great news is with Kaiser University, you do get an assigned admissions counselor who's going to help you and your family through this entire process. And I know for many of you, you're applying to college for the first time, it can be a little overwhelming. Um, so I'm sure I can speak for myself and all the admissions counselors here when we say that we're here to support you in every step of that, that process. Um, for my graduate students, you can take a quick look, see what will be required. The GMAT or GRE can be waived if your bachelor's degree GPA is over a 3.2. Um, so bonus for you for all that extra hard work you put in in your undergrad. All right, so just to wrap up guys, um, if you're not yet, follow us on social media, any schools really that you're interested in, follow them on social media. It's a great way to see what's happening on campus. At Kaiser University, we do have our students take over our social media accounts quite often. So it really gives you a chance to see a day in the life of a Seahawk. Um, and if you found what I shared with you today interesting or intriguing, you wanna know more, uh, perhaps you're thinking about taking that next step to apply, the QR code, uh, on the left of your screen is what you can scan to go ahead and get your application started. And I will put my cell phone number in the chat. So if anybody does have any questions, you're welcome to reach out to me directly. Thank you so much. All right, up next, we've got Stevens Institute of Technology. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Megan Highland, and I'm the Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Stevens Institute of Technology. Um, Stevens is located in Hoboken, New Jersey, so right outside New York City. We're a smaller school of about 4,000 undergraduate students, so we welcome in about 1,000 students each year. What that looks like on a daily basis for students is an average class size of about 25 with a 12 to 1 student to faculty ratio. So if you are looking for a smaller community, um, we might be a good fit for you. Stevens does offer over 30 different areas of study. They're all listed up here on the screen. We are primarily STEM-based schools, so offering programs in things like engineering, math, science, computer science. We have a business school as well, as well as programs in the humanities and arts. What's important to note as a potential applicant to Stevens is that if you do submit an application, we do ask you to indicate your first and second choice program on the application. And then if you're offered admission to the institution, it is to that particular program because you do begin in your major right away at Stevens. So you get to figure out very quickly, yes, I like this area of study, let's continue, or no, perhaps not, let me change my major. So while you are indicating an area of study on your freshman application and beginning in that program, you do still have two years to officially declare your area of study. So you do still get that time to explore. You can also come in undecided in different areas like business, humanities, science, engineering, if you know more broadly what you wanna study, but perhaps not super specifically yet. Once you get to the institution, you're also able to potentially pursue double majors, majors and minors. We also have accelerated bachelor's, master's degree programs at Stevens. So you can get both those degrees in five years as opposed to the typical six. So just some things to consider. I won't go into detail about all of these programs. Do feel free to, again, reach out to your admissions counselor if you have any specific questions about any area of study. And also our academic catalog is quite helpful in terms of outlining the different courses for each of the majors and helping you try to, again, kind of figure out which one might be the best fit for you to start. I mentioned that we're located in Hoboken, New Jersey, which is right across the river from New York City. Um, Hoboken, though, itself is a city as well, but it's just a mile by a mile. So it has much more of a neighborhood feel to it. You get comfortable very quickly in that space. As you can see in the top right corner of your screen, our campus, the aerial shot, we do have a traditional campus in the sense that you come up through gates with the academic quad, library, residence halls, academic buildings, but we're entirely open to the city of Hoboken 
and then have that access to New York City that our students really do take advantage of for social, cultural, personal, and of course, professional development opportunities as well. In terms of living at Stevens, we do provide housing for students all four years. Um, over 90% of our freshmen do live on campus and we have seven first year residence halls. Then starting this upcoming fall of 2022, our sophomore class will move into our new university center complex. We have two residential towers that are part of this complex. So freshman year and sophomore year, you're living on campus. And then junior and senior year, if you want to continue to receive housing from the institution, Stevens leases apartments in the city of Hoboken on your behalf. So you're still considered a resident of the institution because you're getting your housing through the school, but we've secured an apartment for you. Even though housing is provided all four years, you're not required to live in Stevens housing any of the years. You can certainly be a commuter student all the way throughout. And even for those students who are living in leased apartments, again, as I mentioned, because Hoboken is just a mile by a mile, you can easily walk from any of these apartments back up to campus. We also do have a shuttle service that runs around the city, bringing students back and forth as well. I mentioned um, that many of our students are really interested in pursuing professional opportunities while undergraduates. Our location is certainly key in that, but they can also do these professional opportunities in other parts of the country, around the world. Just as you'd be given a faculty advisor from your start at Stevens, you're also given a career center advisor who begins to work with you through that process, helping you build your resume, working on your cover letter skills, interview skills, figuring out what it is that you do and do not like, all in the process of helping you secure that first full-time job after graduation. And Stevens students are very successful in this process. 97% of our graduates for the class of 2021 were either employed or enrolled in graduate school full-time six months after graduation with an average starting salary of over $75,000 a year. We're ninth in the nation for career placement, we're 15th for mid-career salaries, 14th for return on investment. So our students don't just hit the ground running right away, they really continue that momentum over time. And things like our internship program, which is helping them secure summer work experiences, our cooperative education program, which is helping students have work experiences during the academic year, all again lend really nicely to these strong career outcomes at the end of the day. In terms of applying to Stevens, we do use the common application. So many schools do use that. You would just add Stevens as, as another school you might be applying to using that method. In terms of the written pieces of the application, we only require that one common application personal statement. We do not have any additional short answer or supplemental questions at Stevens. We of course need your official transcript. That comes to us in combination with a document known as your school profile or your school report. So this gives us more information about your high school. And we're reviewing your academic performance in the context of your high school. So taking into account the opportunities you've had and how you've achieved within those areas. We do have specific math and science requirements in terms of what we want to see on the transcript based upon the major that you're applying to. So do check out the recommended coursework section of the undergraduate admissions website for more information there. We are looking at every class year and every subject area, but again, given our focus on STEM as an institution, those math and science classes are especially important. We require two letters of recommendation, one from a counselor, one from a teacher, and we actually just announced today that we will be remaining test optional for one additional year for the fall 2023 incoming class. We're a school with early decision and regular decision deadlines. Early decision is a binding agreement, so you have to be absolutely sure that you want to attend Stevens if you apply early decision, because you're essentially saying, if I'm admitted, I will come. So you have two options there for us. And then of course, regular decision as well, in which you can apply regular decision to as many schools as you'd like. You're not making a commitment to any one particular place. At Stevens, you're automatically considered for merit-based aid just by applying for admission. And if you wanna be considered for need-based aid, you submit the FAFSA, which is a government form, and the CSS profile, which is a form made available through College Board. You get your financial aid award letter at the time of admission. So if you're offered admission to Stevens, you will know right then and there what your particular cost of attendance will be at the school. Also, just a quick note that we do have summer programs for high school students through our pre-college programs. So if you are looking to spend one to two weeks in a residential experience on a college campus, please do check out our different academic modules. The applications are still open for this summer. And of course, we'll have this program in the summers to come as well. Here's some contact information should you have any questions um, about our institution. And again, you have an assigned admissions counselor that is happy to help you along the way in this process as well. Thanks so much. All right, our next school is gonna be Bridgewater State University. Hi, my name is Dana Olson and I am an admission counselor at Bridgewater State University. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen if it decides to cooperate today. Um, here we go. I hope everyone can kind of see what's going on. Uh, so my acronyms are she, her, and hers. Again, Bridgewater State University. 
Uh, Bridgewater, Massachusetts is where Bridgewater State University is located. We were founded in 1840 um, on the premise of educating everyone. And that's what we are known for um, is education. We are the leading graduator of teachers uh, in Massachusetts every single year. We're located in Southeastern Mass, right between Boston and Providence. So it takes about 30 minutes to get to each location, but what's really nice is we're right near Cape Cod too. So that's about 40 minutes. So it's extremely convenient and there's lots to do around the area. So we are a suburban setting, which is really nice. It is a completely open campus. Uh, so you can really be walking on campus and then go right into a uh, residential area, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, and we are the only state school in Massachusetts to have a commuter rail stop right on campus. So our students really utilize um, that option of travel to go to internships, to go in and out of Boston. You can catch your Red Sox games and Celtics. Uh, and really, when you take that commuter rail into Boston, you can go anywhere, anywhere from there, um, whether it be train or by plane, which is really nice. So, um, in terms of our size and academics. So we are a mid-sized school with over 10,000 students and that's undergraduate and graduate combined, uh, about 9,000 undergraduates. We are a 240 acre campus split between east and west side. And it's really nice because that commuter rail does split right down the middle. Um, between East and West, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, so we get to walk under a little bridge to get from one side to the other. We have around 41 buildings on campus, including 11 residence halls. And four of those residence halls are dedicated to first year students, which we find is really nice because you're with like-minded students in the same type of situation. So it's really nice. So our average class size is around 23 students and our student to faculty ratio is 16 to one. We have no TAs and R courses are not lecture style. And what's really nice is over 95% of our professors do hold terminal degrees in their field, which is the highest degree that they can hold. So they really kind of know what they're doing in there. As far as financial aid and scholarships, we are a third of the cost of a private institution, and that's across the U.S. More than 85% of students, I think it's actually around 90% now, do receive financial aid at Bridgewater. So that's really important to keep in mind when you're considering a cost, because that should be on your, you know, one of the top things on your list. So our honest state students do receive um, a scholarship every single year that they're at Bridgewater. Um, so every every you know, four or five years, depending on when a student graduates. It's a $5,000 uh, scholarship. It's called our Horace Mann Scholarship, which is absolutely amazing. We also have uh, additional scholarships, but they are merit-based. And that's something that our students really need to keep in mind. So we're looking for a 3.9 or higher GPA and an 1100 or higher SAT score. And again, they are merit-based. It's not something that you would apply to rather after reviewing your application, we would choose you for that particular award um, and reach out to you. So as far as our application process, what we're looking for in requirements is the average, you know, our average GPA is a 3.3. Obviously we like to see higher, we see lower, but the average is 3.3. Uh, we are test optional, which means you do not have to submit SAT or ACT scores. That is completely up to you. Um, however, it could benefit you because what we do is we use a flying scale. So the higher your GPA is, the lower your SAT scores can go and vice versa. So you're, if you're on the lower end of that 3.3 GPA, it would really be beneficial for you to submit, you know, some test scores. Uh, letters of recommendation and essay are optional at Bridgewater. However, again, uh, if your academics is not, are not as strong as they could be, we highly recommend submitting those letters as well as that essay. Let us know a little bit more about what is going on in your life, if you have any extracurriculars, part-time jobs, things of that nature. So in Massachusetts, state schools uh, have a specific requirement for courses that students have to take in high school. So we're looking for four courses of English, four courses of math, three courses of science, two social sciences, two foreign languages, and two electives. So please keep that in mind when you're looking at any Massachusetts state schools. Our early action deadline is February 15th. It's non-binding, which means you get to hear from all the schools that you apply to and wait to make your decision to make first. And that's an important decision to make. So weigh your options carefully. So 
another fun fact about our early action is we never deny an early action applicant. Rather, we defer them to the regular applicant pool. Our dean is also a little bit more lenient with our early action uh, students because you're not competing against a larger application pool. So if you're a little bit worried about getting into Bridgewater, um, that may be the best way to apply. We also have our regular decision, which is February 15th, but in all honesty, we are rolling admissions, so you can apply uh, up until the last moment. Uh, we do have the Common app, or you can access the application on our website. It looks like my time is, is running out. Um, so we'll just go over campus life really quickly. We are a 60% commuter versus 40% um, housing on campus, over 80 plus clubs and organizations. 22 NCAA athletic teams, as well as uh, study abroad. We have over a thousand programs in 50 different countries. So we really ask our students uh, to take advantage of that uh, because it's an amazing opportunity and it looks absolutely phenomenal on your resume. Uh, so thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, and I will put my information in the chat. Thank you. All right, next up, we've got Mary Mack College. Awesome. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for being here. Just going to share this. Going to talk a little bit about Merrimack College and the different things that we have to offer, especially for anybody interested in STEM programs. Some quick information about us. We are a small to medium-sized school with around 4,000 undergraduate students, 1,400 graduate students. Our campus is in North Andover, Massachusetts, which is about 25 miles north of the city of Boston. Uh, we offer well over 100 academic programs to study across our five different academic colleges. Um, we have students from 38 states around the country, as well as 47 countries around the world as well. Here you can see a breakdown of our student body and how they go across our five different academic uh, colleges. <laughs> of course, our Girard School of Business does have a lot of students in it at the moment. Um, although, our, you, as you can see, our School of Science and Engineering is holding pretty strong at about 16% of our student body and a fairly even distribution across the remainder of our schools. One of the exciting things about the programs that we offer now in terms of our STEM programs is that we're actually really trying to expand upon the lab spaces that we offer, uh, that we currently have for students. Uh, we actually just recently acquired a couple of buildings uh, very right next to the, the campus. They're going to become part of our campus, and one of which is going to be our new Engineering Innovation Center. It'll be open this fall, 2022. It will have all new classroom spaces, all new state-of-the-art laboratory spaces with all of the equipment and machinery and stuff that you'll be using in the real world. Um, so for anybody who's interested in any of our engineering programs, we do offer mechanical engineering, civil engineering, computer engineering and electrical engineering. These lab spaces will be available to you as early as this fall. Um, so definitely something that we wanna be sure to share with people. And a nice side effect of that is that the spaces that we already have in some of our science and engineering buildings are gonna be able to be reutilized for other programs, including some of our computer science programs. So one of the other things that's coming this fall is some renovations to our Palmazano Hall, uh, which will be a little bit more geared toward now our computer science and data science students. Um, so the engineering students will now have a new building. And as a result, it will open up a lot more space for us to expand upon the offerings that we have in our computer science programs, cybersecurity, um, data science, all those different kinds of offerings. Um, of course, in addition to that, we have a number of other general science programs, uh, a number of different health science programs, uh, pre-medical, pre-dental, pre-vet tracks for students to take as well, so that you can go into those individual schools um, if you would like to when you're done with your undergraduate degree. Of course, an important aspect of looking for any college is going to be what kind of opportunity are you going to be able to have when you graduate. We are a school that guarantees internship and co-op opportunities, so they're not required, but we do guarantee them. Um, as a result, we do see almost 90% of our students do taking part in at least one of them before they graduate. And one of the things that comes as a result of that is our incredible 96% successful career outcomes rate, meaning within nine months of graduating, we're seeing that 96% of our graduates are either employed or in a graduate program. Here you can see a sampling of some of the companies that our students 
will go and do some of their internship opportunities at or their full-time um, job opportunities after they graduate. Of course, you can see a lot of these companies are based in the Boston area or have uh, headquarters in the Boston area. Of course, some really, really important um, technology companies like HubSpot, uh, Raytheon, of course, very popular for students as well. Of course, we also want to make sure that you're having a good experience. Um, and I really do think that that starts with our Division I athletics across the board. Um, historically, we've only been a hockey school, but a couple of years ago, we moved everything else up and it's been generating a lot of excitement for students on campus. Uh, we do also offer a number of different clubs and activities for students to take part in, uh, as well as housing that is guaranteed for all four years if you would like to live on campus. If you're interested in applying, we do have a number of different deadlines. Uh, we do offer early decision, which as some of my colleagues have mentioned is a binding agreement. Uh, but in addition to that, we offer early action. And uh, after that, we do switch over to a bit of a rolling process, provided that we have enough space in some of our academic programs. Uh, I will mention in particular, that our nursing program is incredibly popular and incredibly competitive. Um, so if you're interested in applying for our nursing program, uh, I would definitely recommend applying by that January 15th, second early action deadline. Um, in terms of the things that we'll need from you, we'd ask for uh, an application, of course, we are on the Common App, so you can simply add us onto the list for the Common App, uh, a secondary school report, high school transcript, and at least one letter of recommendation, the exception, of course, again, being for our nursing program, which we require two recommendations for. And lastly, I would just like to say that we would love, love, love to have you come and visit our beautiful campus in North Landover, Massachusetts. I personally think it would be hard to not fall in love with the campus if you come to visit. Um, so please definitely uh, visit our website, uh, merrimack.edu visit to get some more information about coming to see us. If you have any other questions, please, by all means, feel free to reach out anytime. Uh, we are always happy to assist. And that is all I have. Thanks very much for the time. All right, and to close out the, the night, we have University of New Hampshire. Thank you. All right, so here is my screen. Hi, everybody. My name is Mia Foch, and I am your mission counselor from the University of New Hampshire. Um, so hope everyone can see my screen okay, uh, but let's get started. So UNH is a flagship public tier one research university for the state of New Hampshire. And of course, you know, there are so many reasons why New Jersey students choose to attend the University of New Hampshire. But for tonight, I want to highlight the top three for you. And they are at, regarding our academics, our community, as well as student outcome. I'll start by talking a little about our academics. So UNH offer over a hundred different majors for you to choose from. And one of the things that really distinguish the University of New Hampshire and our learning experience is really our focus on research. And since you are interested in STEM, I think research is truly key to ensure you know, a robust academic experience, give you an advantage when it comes to internship at top companies, or organization, job placement after graduation, and of course, accepting into advanced degree program, med school, vet school, and so on. And at UNH, you do so at a top tier research institution. Um, we are one of just 20 Lancy and Space Grand universities, um, university in the country, and one of just three public tier one research university in New England. So what that means is that we receive funding from organizations like NASA, the Department of Defense, NOAA, um, National Institute of Health to do research in all these different areas. It's allowed to attract top tier faculty and researchers to come to UNH, who in turn give you an amazing education Education. And then when you marry that with one of the oldest and largest undergraduate research conference in the US, that means that you get to have access to research as early as freshman year at the University of New Hampshire. Pretty cool. Um, so here are the five colleges within the University of New Hampshire. Um, as you can see, a lot of different options, so they, uh, a wide range um, has come to our STEM offering. All the program at the University of New Hampshire are direct entry, including nursing, of our engineering program, computer science, and more. We also have unique programs such as equine study and popular program, including marine biology. Again, everything is direct entry and we are test optional. Oh, okay. All right, a little click happy tonight. Um, we have also have over 50 research center and institute. Um, and so I would like to highlight a few for you. 
So you can see here, this is an image of our interoperability lab or the IOL at UNH, which is one of the world leading testing facility for data and networking product. So what it does is employ many of our current undergraduate students, especially those in the computer science, lab engineering major. This is fun fact where the first Apple iPhone was tested by our very own UNH student before being released to the market. Here's some more um, images of, you know, exercise sign lab, our organic dairy research farm, aka amazing ice cream on campus. Um, so you can see a lot of um, the STEM based facility. Um, I think what I hope you get out of this is that hands on learning is really essential um, to the UNH academic experience. So the second aspect of UNH I'd like to highlight for you is our community. Um, we currently have around 13,000 undergraduate and then 15,000 overall, making us a mid-site institution. So what this means is that we are big enough to offer you, you know, the diverse experiences and opportunity that you want um, with a larger school, but at the same time still have that tight-knit, personal, and supportive community uh, with, of course, a lot of school spirit. Our students also embrace all the opportunity at our location, Durham, New Hampshire, um, our residential campus and our sites offer them. Um, our students are guaranteed housing for all four years and the vast majority, as you can see here, 96% um, do live on our main campus in Durham, which is a very classic New England college feel. We have 20 different resin hall for you to choose from and three award-winning dining hall throughout campus. And if you are wondering what people do in New Hampshire, I got you. Our students do keep very busy, both on our campus throughout the week as well as on the weekend. We're going to Division One athletic event to participating in you know, many of our student club as well as exploring the area around campus. Our location is a big draw for our student. Um, it's this offers students a lot of different um, things to do, opportunity to get involved with. We are now north of Boston, um, an hour and a half from the majestic White Mountain, and of course, short 20 minutes from the Atlantic Ocean. We are very coastal, um, but literally in the middle of everywhere. Um, and Durham is quite easy to get to. Um, from New Jersey, you can drive, fly, or take the train. The Amtrak train actually stopped right on our campus and will take you directly um, to TD Garden right in the heart of Boston. And then the last and final aspect of UNH that I want to highlight for you tonight is the student outcome. Um, as you can see that overall, the vast majority of our graduates reported that they were employed or in graduate school uh, within six months of graduation. And if they were working, the majority reported that their job is related to their major uh, area of study at the University of Hampshire. Um, graduate of our college engineering and physical sciences, for example, on average start a career at around 65 to 70,000 um, a year. Um, I think these results really speak to the value of the UNH education. And then last but not least, we are a common app school. Our early action, which is non-binding, is November 15, and then the regular decision is February 1st. Um, again, we are test optional. Um, you're welcome to send your test score, um, but you certainly don't have to. We also want to highlight that we, um, UNH provides quite a bit of financial support to our incoming student, both in the form of need-based aid as well as merit scholarship. And with that, Thank you so much for your time today, and I certainly hope to see you on campus soon. Go Wildcats. All right, well, thanks everyone so much for attending tonight. Um, that includes everything that we have. And so when you close this window, you will see a link to a quick five question survey. So we would just appreciate any feedback you could provide about your experience here tonight. I would also encourage you to check back on the schedule and sign up for more sessions. Um, and then finally, you'll be able to view not only the sessions recording as well as all of the other recordings at strivescan.com slash New Jersey. Thanks so much everyone for attending and enjoy the rest of your night. Bye-bye.